Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartman from graphicinmotion.com and in this tutorial I will show you how to customize my vintage light bulb explosion logo After Effects template. Before we get started inside After Effects, let me take a quick look at the content of this template. Everything is pretty self-explanatory. We have two different versions here. The first one is called No Plugins and that means that this does not require any third-party plugins. You can use this with After Effects CS6 and all versions above. Then the second project here requires Video Copilot's Optical Flares plugin. So depending whether you have this plugin or not, you choose which version of the template you use. Now let's jump right into After Effects and let's get started with the customization process. In my case, I will use the Optical Flares version because I have Optical Flares installed on my system. And you see that After Effects tells me that this must be converted, but this is no error. Don't worry, it just means that it was created with an older version of After Effects. And as I already said, this was originally created with After Effects CS6 and it is compatible with all later versions. So when you open up the project, you see that you are immediately in the setup composition and a few other compositions are already open. So as a first step of this customization process, let's import and add a logo to our template. Therefore, I go to File and I choose Import File and then I move to my logo folder. And in this case, I will use my logo and import it. Now let's move to the logo composition. If it's not already open in the timeline, then you can find it right here. Just double click to open it up and then drag your logo on top of the placeholder. You can of course also use a text layer or a shape layer or whatever. So I will just scale it that it fits approximately my placeholder, something like that. And I will turn off the placeholder. Now, if I move back to my setup composition and take a look, you will see that my logo now appears inside the template. The next step of this customization process is quite important. So you see that we have all these lightnings here and you see that each of the endpoints of these lightnings is marked by one of these purple rectangles here, which are actually null objects. And now we have to position these around our logo so that it really looks nice that this, these lightnings really hit the logo at the right points. So to do that and to, to speed up this process a bit, I will change a few things. If you select now one of these lightning ends here, like this one for example, and if you start shifting this around, this can be quite slow. And this is because After Effects now calculates the lightning and the glow and everything and you see that it, it requires a bit of time to really calculate the result. So what I would recommend to do is to just solo all of these lightning layers. So let's just select all of these layers here and let's solo them for now. And that we see our logo again, we have to solo the logo precomp layer right here. So solo this as well. And to make this even faster, let's go to our composition menu right here. And some older versions, I think that it is on the other side of the panel, I'm not sure, but just these three little, little strokes here and turn on draft 3D. Then After Effects will also turn off the lights and this will make it even faster to do that. So now I will change the resolution to half that I see what I do here. And then I go through my null objects and position them. I always start with the ones right on the edge of our logo. So I will select this one first here. And actually, let me also just uh, lock this color correction layer for now, because otherwise I'm selecting this all the time. And now let's just select these null objects. Now let's go in here and I will use the arrow keys because this is a little bit more precise in this case. If you just press the arrow key, it will move one pixel. If you hold down shift, you can move it 10 pixels. And now I will just select nice points, nice edges where my lightning will hit my logo. Make sure that the, the null object here, this corner here, the anchor point is always sitting on your logo and, and not something like that or beside it because then it will not look good. So I will start with my corners here. First of all, this one, then I will use this one here and bring it to this corner 
actually it's it's really up to you how you do that and it also of course depends how your logo looks but i like to start on the edges and work from the edges to the middle of the logo like that and then i will use this one here and i will bring this to this edge here or to this corner i should say and if you move in further zoom in further then these steps get even smaller and you can position these more accurately okay you see now i positioned my corners and now we'll just move on and select this null object and put it to another corner here maybe to this one here and so on and so on so that you do not get too bored i will speed up this process and i will be back when i'm finished Okay, now I'm finished with the positioning of all these lightnings and if I turn them on now you will see how this looks like. So let's go to our composition menu here and make sure that we turn off Draft 3D. So this is really important that you turn this off again. And now you see my lights are already active and are already lighting my logo. And now if I unsolo all my layers here, so just turn off all these solo switches, then my lightnings will appear again. And now I am in half resolution, so let me change this back to quarter just that we have a bit more of a responsive preview here and you see that yeah it looks actually quite nice they are distributed evenly they are lighting up the logo nicely they're hitting it on nice spots like the corners here and it looks really good the next step of the customization is that we can change the look of this logo quite a bit so you can change the colors of the lightnings and of the light and everything to do this you can simply select the color setup layer and you see we have a bunch of controls here. The first one is the lightning color. And if we change this, let's go into this here and let's make this, let's say a little bit of a bluish tint. And in this case, I will just make it a bit desaturated and not too bright because otherwise they are, they are getting too bright because there is a lot of effects on them like exposure and like glow effects. And you see they're, they're already a little bit white. So I will go back here a bit into the saturation to the darker colors until I get a nice value. And I think that this looks pretty nice. Let's see how it looks in later stages here. Yeah, it's it's nice blue energetic look. And now you can change the logo light color. And if you take a look here at the lights that are actually creating these contact points here, these nice highlights on the logo, this is where you can change the color here. And in this case, there is something important to do. So just open up this color control and now do not change the brightness so you can change the hue and the best is to just use these sliders here and not these these color pickers here and i will explain you this in a moment but first of all let's choose a nice look so i will go to a hue let's say about something like 200 200 degrees in our color wheel this looks really cool and you see i will just desaturate it a bit so i will just go let's see in the saturation maybe 17 let's see how this looks like it's a bit too low so let's go back to 25 and i think this should be all right yeah this looks really nice so let's go back here and i will explain you why you should not use this color picker in this case this template is created in 32 bits in a linear space linear color space and this is because it creates really nice glows and you can create this really crazy highlight and you can just really create a nice look using these settings and if you take a look here at the rgb settings they are all exceeding a value of one and this is possible uh, with these settings so if you are working with eight bits you cannot even do that but the problem is that this standard color box here is limited to a value of one so if i choose the same color here inside this box here you see now take a look at the lights what is happening now they are very dull they are just not really bright and they are not really creating these nice highlights that i want so i will cancel out of that now the changes will be undone so this is why you should just change the color here of the logo light by using the hue slider and the saturation and just do not touch the brightness or these values here or this these uh, this color picker area and also the rgb values just leave them and 
change the colors as I showed you with these two options here. Okay, the next step is to change the flare color. To change the flare color, you see we have no flare visible now, so let's go to a point of our animation where we can see it. And you see that the flare is right here in the middle. And I could also solo it that you see it. So this is the flare. And if I change the color now of this, so let's take the same color as this one. But of course, for the flare, it's a little bit too dark. So I can now just bring this up here and make it a little bit brighter. And this looks actually quite nice. Okay, so far so good. Now we have the shock wave. So if you take a look at the shock wave, which is, which is actually happening during the explosion, the shock wave are these dust particles, these energetic particles that you see here. Actually, they are not particles, but it looks like, yeah, like a shock wave. And I will just use the same color as for the flare. Mm, doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit greenish here, but this is because of the color correction. I will show you this in a moment. And let's just make this a bit more saturated, like so, that it gets a little bit more blue. Okay. Now it already looks quite nice. If you take a look here, we have nice bluish lights, but you see that the backplate is not in the right. It's still orange and we have to correct this. So you can change the hue of the backplate by using the backplate hue transform. And if you take a look here at the backplate and actually what is the backplate? The backplate is the 3D render. So this is the render that came out directly from Cinema 4D using Octane Render to create this nice 3D light bulb and all of the stuff that you see here. So this was not created with After Effects, of course. And to colorize this backplate, you have the option to change the hue right here. So if I change this now, let's say to a value of maybe 125, you will see what this does. Now it's very greenish and I don't like this. So maybe, maybe 160 and these are always like degrees on the color wheel and now you see we have a really really bluish tint uh, on our backplate it looks really cool and you could play with the saturation if you want so you could turn this down a bit maybe minus 10 to make it not quite that saturated now let's take a look how this looks like and now the blue is really looking good and our scene is nicely tinted blue Okay, so far so good. Now let's take a look at the color correction that I talked about and I locked this layer before during the, the lightning customization. So unlock it again if you locked it also. And on this color correction layer you see I just added two, two filters and actually these settings as they are only work, let's be honest, with the standard look of this template. So if you start to, to mess around with the colors and this will not this will not help you anymore to make this better so you will have to set this up on your own so in my case what i would do is i would first of all reset the curves here and again i will just brighten this up a little bit because this was what i did before in the settings just make it a little bit brighter then i would go into the reds here and yeah actually we do not really need any red so we can just drag these out a bit, even maybe a bit more, like so. And now I could add some greens in here, maybe just a little bit, like so. And if you want, of course, maybe a little bit of blue, maybe a bit stronger here in the dark areas, something like that. I don't know, you know, just a very, very simple color correction here. And you see what this does now. It just adds a little bit of, of vibrance, of color vibrance, and still looks quite cool. Now you have a really nice bluish scene here. Okay, now you're ready to export. And before you export, you probably also want to add some audio. So let's add in an audio. Let's move to the audio composition. And in my case, I will use the same audio that I used for the preview video. If you want to use exactly the same audio, you can find a link inside the project folder that will lead you to Audio Jungle and there you can get this audio file. So let's import that by going to File, Import File. I'll quickly navigate to my assets folder and import this. It's called Epic Impact Logo by Turpac on Audio Jungle. And they will add this into my audio layer. And you see now there is one uh, marker in this composition. 
and this marker marks the explosion. So this is exactly the point in time where the explosion is happening in this animation. So if you go now to the setup composition and take a look, now my marker time indicator here is at a totally different point in time. But if I move like, let's see, how can we do this to the export 1080 here, then you see this is exactly the point in time where the explosion is happening. So why is this here? If you want to use exactly the same audio that I did, you have to do a little bit of shifting. So let's select this layer and let's press LL, so L twice on your keyboard to make the waveform visible. Now let's move in here a bit, zoom in a bit in the timeline and place your marker exactly on this or your, your time indicator exactly on the marker. Now grab your layer and shift it over until until the waveform ends exactly here at the point of the explosion. And if you edit it like this, it will sound exactly the same as it does in the preview video. Of course, you can use any other audio that you want, and maybe it's also helpful to position your audio when the start of the explosion is marked here inside the audio composition. Okay, but I'm talking way too long. The customization is already finished. So what we can do now is we can just go to export and you see we have two different export compositions. The first one is Ultra HD uh, 2160p and the second one is a standard Full HD 1080p. So you can choose the resolution, which one you want to export, and then you can send this to the render queue or to the media encoder. Okay, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, then please feel free to contact me either through my website, which is www.graphicinmotion.com, or you can also contact me directly through my video hive profile. I hope that you like this template, that you create some awesome intro animations with it. Thank you very much for watching, and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.